All right, so for today's tutorial, we are going to put letters and objects on curved surfaces. Firstly, I will show you how to do it on a flat surface. So if I have an object, if I have an object over here, let me pause it. All right, so we're starting with this surface. Um, I'm just going to pick a profile. I will pick something like... Uh, this is just a... Ra I'm just making a random shape right now. Uh, I'm just making a random shape right now um, with a bunch of straight lines. So when I make this in 3D, this is just for my demonstration, if I make this into 3D by extruding it, right, we can just have a solid shape over here. I can press OK. Now, when I want to sketch some letters on, we are going to create a sketch. So let's look at this side first, because this is the easiest one to show you. We can go to Create. Uh, sorry, this one over here, the Create a New Sketch. Press that button. We press this flat face over here, and then we get into our Sketch menu. And then you can draw your letters. We can go like this and draw our T's like manually, even though it's really annoying. right? This is not, right, that's not very inefficient, that's not a very uh, efficient way of doing our shapes. Um, or we can go to create and we can use the text function. Right, so we create, we can pick our text, we can do it a single text or text along a path. So if you want to have like a curve text that follows something, you can do that. But let's just do a plain text for now. And press OK, press anywhere over here. So I want my text to be there, to here. And then I can type in uh, uh, with a double G. <laughs> oh, is it a double G? <laughs> Why would you embarrass me like that? No, no, no. I want to be historically accurate. This video is going to last forever. All right, so topoggers over here, right? We have this, and like any text function, I believe you, um, you have their variety of different um, fonts. So Franklin Gothic, ooh. Lucidia, bright, oh, nice. Ooh, it looks so elegant, doesn't it? So we have our poggers text over there. We, and we finish our sketch, all good. We can select this shape over here for our T and then we can do like what we normally do. We can go out or we can go in, right? We can, we know we can do this before. Um, the sketch hit itself, so. Or we can do the same thing with Pog. Oh, that looks like the Google logo, doesn't it? We can press Poggers and then we can go and extrude and then we can go like this and make Poggers into 3D. All right, or we can go, if we just make it one millimeter thick, it's like a low profile and we press OK and there we have Poggers. Right? We have a 3D object on top of it. We can go in or out. Oh, what happened there? I don't know what's happening there. For some reason, it's a weird shape. But this other one works. So we can do that on a flat surface. In fact, if we look at the other side in this weirder shape, these are not straight lines. These are straight lines, but they're not like vertical, horizontal. Uh, they're not like X and Y, Z axis. We can still do the same thing. We can do a sketch. We can press any of these surfaces. Because they are all flat, we can do sketches on it. So we can click over here, and we can press. Uh, let's do this one on the line. How about that? Let's do a spline, and we want to go like. All right, we've got this line over here, and then we're going to go create. We're going to text. We're going to pick a line. We'll pick this line that we want to follow. And then let's go. <laughs> Shish. Whoa. What, sh what text would Shish be? Oh, yes. Nice. Um, ooh, and then fits a path. I believe it does the whole path. Or that just does it normally. You can change your alignments. Uh, normal stuff with text. You can flip it upside down. Ooh, reverse Shish. So let's say we just want it like this. Then uh, we can change our height. So there's not really a font size, 
you just uh, pick the actual height. So it's not like in Word we can change 12 font, 13 font, etc. You just put a height. Um, and then you press OK. So then we have the shish. And then we can do the same thing over here. We can, uh, we've done our sketch. We can extract. We can press the shape that we just made, which is this. Go away. We can press this and we can go out. So an amount, we can go out uh, one millimeter and we can even make it a new, we could in theory make it a new body if we want for it to be a different color. New body. Uh, so then we go over here and ooh. oh, each one of these letters is a new body because they're not touching. All right, but then we can select all those bodies by hiding this, highlighting them all, right clicking, appearance. What color would shish be? Yellow. Probably yellow, yeah, definitely it's a yellow color, right? Uh, let's go, let's make it paint, oh. paint, glossy. Ooh, there, that's definitely. Is that two of them? Oh, nice. There you go. Yellow shish. We can do that. The problem we have is we can do this on any, we can do this on any flat surface. Easy. Because we can sketch directly onto a flat surface. The problem we have is, let's make a, another shape. And this one over here is going to be... Uh, <coughs> right, so I'm just making an, another shape this time. And this one, what's the difference between this shape and the previous one? What's the difference between the shape on the left and the shape on the right? Uh, Anybody? It's curvy. it's curvy, yes. So when I want to attach, uh, if I want to do some text or attach any object to it, um, when I go to sketching, notice how when I hover my mouse over this side, this side is flat, but this surface doesn't exist. It doesn't want to attach to this surface. All right. Again, we can attach to all these flat surfaces, but, uh, and this flat surface, but we can't attach to this curve but we really want to put writing onto this curve. So what we can do, we are going to make the object on a flat surface, and then we're going to project it onto our surface. So let's start by making a sketch. Let's start by making a flat sketch over here. And let's say we just want to make, I'll start by just doing a circle for now. We'll just do a circle and we'll, and we'll do something more interesting later. So this is just a circle. The, dime, the size and dimensions don't really matter. Then I'm going to extract this circle. I am going to make this circle a new object. And I want this, sorry, a new body. And I want this body to make sure it goes through the, the shape, the curved shape. So the circle is going through the curved shape. Then what we will do is we will, uh, we are going to modify Split split face, we're going to get this face over here and we're going to split this face by this surface over here. So then when we press enter, did it work? Now we have this face over here. So we have this curved surface on here. We split it up. And I hid the original circle, but uh, if we hide everything else, we still have that original circle, but, and here's the um, new one. And I believe, so that's if we just want to have the writing on there. So if I get this circle, I can right click this circle, I can change this circle's appearance, um, I can make just this circle yellow, and so I can have yellow writing. I can, in theory, have, if that was a circle, it could also be a text doesn't matter, but the point is we've got an object to project that object onto the 3D thing. Now, the problem we have here, and this is good, right? If we just want text writing on a curved surface, great. Let's say you have like a, a guitar and you want like a cow pattern on it. You can do the same, like, you know, the, the white and black cow stickers. You could do that. The problem we have is what if I want it to be raised a bit? Like when we saw the Smeg toaster, the writing was offset by like one millimeter. So to offset it, we are going to do 
something similar. Going to cancel. Um, let's do, I'll do it on another part. So we're going to do the same thing. We'll sketch, and this time I will sketch. Uh, let's say we want it to be on the real, oh, we want it to be on the top. All right? I want it to be over here, and I will uh, do a text, and this time, this time let's do smeg. All right, we have smeg. Put some nice font. Uh, oh, elucid. Nice. That looks really good. All right, we have this, and we can. Uh, I believe we can move this. Around. Can we even? Oh, nice. There we go. All right. So we have a lovely text. We have our smeg text. We are going to go here. We will uh, finish our sketch. We are going to select our sketch that we. Where is it? Where did it go? Going to select our sketch we just made. We're going to extrude it. We're going to make it go through the body. And we're going to make it a new body. So now what we're going to do is we are going to... Before we got our, the large curved surface and we cut it by the circle that went through. This time we're going to do it the other way around. We're going to get this smooth... This, Smeg over here, we're going to get this smeg to be cut by the body, uh, by the, the curved surface. So, uh, press OK. We will then go over here, we will modify, split the body. We are going to select all these bodies for smeg. And the splitting tool we're going to use is this. All right. So then when we press... Enter. Right, we have made a lot of bodies now. If I hide this, you can see here everyone. It's cut all these bodies over here. We can get rid of all these bodies by highlighting. Can we highlight them? We can highlight all these bodies. Uh, let's do it this way. We're going to highlight all these bodies, and we're just going to hide them because we don't need them anymore. But look at this, we've already got the curved surface over here. We've got this lovely curved surface. Uh, let's show this original part over here. So now we want to do the same thing, but we want to do a one millimeter gap over the top. We have two options. We can either um, what we can do is we'll actually hide these top ones instead and use these three smeg ones at the bottom. And the easiest way I found to do this is you took a picture of that, got these particular parts, moved them, and moved them up one millimetre. Uh, so in this particular frame of reference, it's minus one. And then press OK. So what this was doing is, wait, where'd it go? Bah, bah. <laughs> I moved it down. Okay, so this move. Uh, eight. No, uh, two. So now I moved it up. Look as I moved it up, see how it's risen itself and it's curved around the surface. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut it again. I'm going to go to modify, split body, uh, let's choose these bodies that we want. Three, four. And the tool that we're going to cut it with is this. Press OK. And the same thing we did before with our new bodies that we don't want. We're just going to highlight and get rid of them. It's going to hide them so they're not going to be in our... Oh, we want these ones. We don't want these. There you go. So now look, now you have this curved smeg sign. All right? And this is the only way I could find out how to do this. There might be more efficient ways, but I couldn't find out how to do them. If you find a more efficient way to do it, and it's all going to be very different based on your drawing. 
not your toaster because your toaster should be all the same. But if you have like writing on your individual drawings, you can use the same approach. So what I've done here is then I can select these bodies. Uh, right click, appearance, and then I can change these colors like this. Remove. Right. So there we go. So now I have these raised up. And let's have a look at what this looks like if we were to uh, render it. It should look pretty nice, I imagine. Oh my god. Just... Uh, I think I've got to save it. Save it as text. Save. And now let's... More. Why is this screen such a weird? Go away and go away. Oh, that's better. Brenda. So we just did a rendering just to show what it's going to look like when it's finished. Uh, is it actually rendering? I can't see this. Uh, oh. Shh. Oh, the fan's turning on. It's doing the high speed rendering. All right, it's done. Uh, and I think I will give you a lesson on doing rendering, but I'm going to do that. I'll give you that lesson near the end of the task, so you might, you'll actually have some objects that are worth rendering. Because right now you don't really have anything that's worth rendering. Same with the orthographic projection. You'll have some more, because you'll have more complicated objects then, and I'll be better to answer those questions when you have more complicated objects and things. So based on that, oh, see here we have the image over here. I can't rotate it, but look at that. It, you do get that nice curve smeg over here. And this is the, um, the other one as well. If you are using the 3D printer for anything, like in general, this is not just for graphics, and you want to show text on your 3D image from the 3D printer, you can use this depressing technique. Depressing because it presses in, not because it's sad. Um, but um, because even if it's like half a millimeter, um, half a millimeter, it's going to make the 3D printer make a mark there, so you can still see that information. Um, and it going in is often better for the user because if you need it to be smooth, because your fingers can't feel in. But if you want the user to feel it, like for example, an on-off switch. Like I saw when you had the um, what was that speaker you had in engineering? Yeah, if you feel the on-off button, you can feel that has an indentation on it. So you, if you want it to be tactile, you can raise it. Um, all right, I'm going to stop the tutorial now.